A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of for today's morning conversation my name is ram aguko this is why in the morning you're just in time for the uh, next conversation of the day it is all about youth and politics on this particular monday morning now we shall take a look at what has been trending in the past one week what is it that we've uh, you know uh, 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 we, we need to look out for even in the uh, in the coming few days remember we have a lot in, in store for you in our conversation including the plans of the deputy president he's uh, planning to uh, go to the the ODM uh, uh, stronghold of Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. Uh, how is it going to be? What are our expectations? What do we uh, should we be looking forward to? He has also made uh, you know pointed fingers towards Jubilee and uh, the achievements and uh, uh, po you know p taking or, or poking holes in regards to some of the things that uh, have ha happened within Jubilee Party. Uh, we shall take a look at that in a few. Joining me today, uh, next to me. Ladies first, I'm joined by Geraldine Mwiruri. She is a political analyst and a strategist talking, uh, coming here to give her, her voice in regards to this. Karusa Geraldine. Asante Sana. Uh -huh. sure. And uh, you're well? Yes, I'm very well. Thank it's you. A good Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh -huh. And uh, to my extreme uh, far right, I'm joined by Gerald Minishi. <laughs> he is also a political analyst. Karusa Gerald. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh -huh. Now, uh, there is a company called GM. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am joined by GM, Geraldine Mwiruri and Gerald Minishi. Oh, wow. Coincidentally, <laughs> when I saw their names, I, 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 I said, I must pair these two. <laughs> <laughs> um, so l let me start with you, Geraldine. Tell us a bit about what you do. Uh, I'm Geraldine. I'm a political specialist. I do political strategies, mm -hmm. uh, grassroots type of strategies, and I work with data a lot. I like, I'm a thought leader. Mm -hmm. Basically, I think through data, mm -hmm. work through data, and come up with strategies that help uh, with the grassroots mobilization and implementation of projects. All right, all right. Mostly mm -hmm. with the youth and women. Uh, I'd like to say I champion for more participation of women and youth in mm -hmm. the political space. We want mm -hmm. to see more youth and more women mm -hmm. um, in uh, Parliament uh, 2022. Uh, of course, th this time around <laughs> we're seeing many, many youth and women coming up. Huh? Definitely. So we want more. We don't want to, to fight for the two that gender role. You're, you're, you're leaving that aside. No, like we want to make sure that it's more than to that. It is more than yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that coming. <laughs> General, tell us a bit more about yourself. Oh, I'm General Minishi. I'm a diplomat. I'm a, an author of two books. Actually, the two books are focused on politics. One is titled "Evolving and, and Revolting World: Anatomy of the 21st Century," mm. and another one on new. New Horizons and Intuitive Venture. Generally, those two books, they focus on the challenges of the 21st century, mm. their solutions, and what to foresee in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm also a poet, and I'm also a chairperson of the Sensational Youth Empowerment Movement, which fo solely focuses on youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an organization that, an unprofit organization that we began in when I was in third year in, at campus. Wow. wow. Yeah, wow. and uh, I'm happy to, to join you this morning. Thank you so and much. And I'm looking forward for an interesting conversation. Thank you. I love poetry. Huh? <laughs> I also love poetry. Yeah. I also do. I do write poems. Do you, you write? Yes. I, you write poem. poems? Poems, yes. Poems? Yes. Quite I don't know, I don't know <laughs> if it's very bad that Quite even see. time to say, me, kill a man, who are you, Shima? That's the poem I remember. Oh. You know, do you know that singing that poem? Yeah, Killa, killa, si ni killa mani. Killa moname, killa, killa, killa moname ma, killa moname ma, huwa na ishima. Kwa baba na baba, huwa na ishima. Si ukiwa jiani, fikiri si moyoni. Umjua jirani, huwa na ishima. Asanteni. Let's take it away in the morning. At Ramba, we're going to try to find for channel. I'm, I'm with fantastic guests. You don't want to miss this particular conversation. Engage with us. Uh, remember, we are coming to you live on our website also at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Now, the Deputy President William Ruto is set to pitch camp in ODM strongholds this week toward the region into supporting his 2022 presidential bid. Now, the Deputy President has planned to a series of activities in Kisumu 
Pigori and Homer Bay. Uh, he is set to pitch camp in uh, uh, this uh, in the Nyanza region this week, and uh, uh, you know he is daring. Uh, this is uh, for some uh, they consider this as a daring move, uh, taking his Asla movement campaigns to these three particular regions in Nyanza. Even as he, he said on Saturday that he is ready to work with uh, the Wiper leader, that is Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. Um, let me start with. Uh, you, Geraldine, what, do, what are your thoughts in regards to this particular move here? Good move, bad move, and uh, he's, consider he's considering, uh, you know, to bring in allies, more allies from other other parts. In fact, he he's even saying that if anyone, even from Jubilee, wants to come, let them join UDA. Your voice in regards to that. Um, my voice is, what I think is, uh, first of all, well, he's been selling for us the hustle narrative as young people, telling us how we should hustle. And for me, I don't subscribe to it. Let me start there because I believe the youth can be owners of property. They can be owners. We are not uh, scavenge scavengers. And the hustle narrative basically puts us at a position that uh, we are scavengers. Any our work, we can't be owners of things. It is being given those little things and to keep um, scavenging and not uh, and not owning things eh? mm. and this i don't think this should be first of all a narrative that we should be telling the youth because we're still young we should be telling the youth you can own things you can grow you can become so i think first of all this is not a narrative that should be we should be letting the youth buy into yeah. and the young people so as much as he's going to nyanza um I think the youth have come, the youth are starting to see the light. So it may not be such a, a big move or something. You know, he's been campaigning for the past four years mm -hmm. and we've just started seeing the other aspirants coming now. And I think that is why he even sees the need to start uh, calling for allies and all that. We won't dismiss, we can't dismiss Kalonzo for sure, but... Uh, we've seen through the years, Kalonzo sits on the fence all the time, and he, most of the time, I've seen a meme doing around doing rounds that mm -hmm. uh, every uh, presidential election they threaten f mm -hmm. <laughs> to to vie for presidency, which mm -hmm. never happens. So um, I don't think it's not something to ignore that mm -hmm. Kalonzo might want to. To want to vie. Yeah, want to vie. For presidency. And anyway, they've been saying, Kalonzo has been saying that uh, they're not, uh, they don't want to be pulled into something. You see, there's been this vibe going around that they're being requested to support a certain candidate. It would be ironical then if he's mm. not vying and he's mm. going to to jump into mm. another. Is, is, this, is, is this a bold move for, for him to make, you know, going to ODM... Uh, 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 leader Raila Odinga's uh, stronghold, and, and, and is it even going to be successful? <laughs> well, in my introspection, I think that uh, the DP Ruto going to Nyanza to, to sell his agenda there is not, is not bad because, first of all, Kenya is a democratic country, and anyone has a right to go wherever he wants to go, wherever county he wants to go to sell their agenda. Mm -hmm. But I'm concerned about the, the political agenda or the political manifestos of these political leaders. We have to put into consideration that our political leaders, invariably, they have uh, tended to focus so much on next elections as opposed to next generations. And I don't think that they are so much concerned about we, the common one, at the grassroots level. They are just championing for their political interest. Mm. You know, and uh, it's a high time that we have to raise our voices high up the political agenda so that mainstream politicians can buy can buy it and uh, act on it very, mm -hmm. very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ruto, whether it's Oka, whether it's UDA, I have no problem with these political different political factions, but uh, I have a problem with uh, the leadership, the leadership of this uh, country. You know, it's a high time that at least we should change the narratives. The hustler narrative, for example, as my colleague has said it is cultivating a false illusion of consensus. And uh, as a country, I think we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are punching below our weight, and it's repugnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at the, 
um, OKA, OKA. The deputy president made, uh, extended an olive branch to all of them. Uh, <laughs> here we are looking at Honorable Musalem Mudavadi, Honorable Gideon Moy, Honorable Moses Utangula, and Honorable uh, Kalonzo Musioka. And uh, he said that they should join him on this band who are gone off uh, 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 UDA in his party and, uh, you know, give him strength on this other side. Um, is that a political move that can change the conversation? Well, uh, I'm not sure it will change the conversation, but I think it's just a PR stand to, from the political, from different political spectrums. Why, why am I saying this? Uh, for example, if you look at Oka, in my opinion, I think those leaders, uh, they don't know actually what they want. You know, somebody like Wetangula, look somebody like Wetangula. He, he, wanted, he wants to vie for, uh, for presidency. Mm. Somebody like uh, Kalonzo. There are people who they just change their decision overnight. So, and I will not be surprised even if they join, whether they join uh, UDA or whether they choose to join Raila on the other, on the other side in UDM. But the, the key question mm. that we need to focus ourselves or, or rather to ask is that uh, which, leader sh which leader should we Kenyans, you know, elect for that presidential seat. And uh, if we choose that leader, are we choosing him based on the content of his character and, and leadership performance and maybe development track, or we are just choosing him because of our ethnic affiliations or political affiliations? I, 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 let, me, let me get you clearly. Are you saying that the Oka leaders are inconsistent? Yes, I think they are inconsistent. If you look at history, look at the... All Nasa, of them individually? Yeah, I think all of them. Mudavadi, Kalonzo, okay. all of them. I'm saying you're smiling. <laughs> Do you agree yeah, with what he's saying? Yeah, I'm smiling because I think he's right. Uh. But I think it's true he's right. Uh. These people are never consistent. They are always changing. And because of this, they've also lost ground in their various uh, places. For mm. example, if we look at, uh, at um, Kalonzo, Ukambani, we now have um, Ngilu, right? Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have, is also there. we have this other one for Kitui, it's called Kitui, Makweni, uh, Makweni. Makweni. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. So they can't say that the privilege they had the last time of saying, for example, if we know Kenyan politics sometimes are well down to our tribal cocoons, right? Mm. Like who's a kingpin and all that. So we can't for sure say that Kalonzo now is the kingpin in Kambani. We've seen that narrative change. We've seen um Apparently, even the others, Kina Mutua, Kina Kivuza, want to vie also for presidency, and mm. they have a following. So basically, he won't say that uh, moving to Uda, he will carry the whole of Ukambani votes. It won't have you an know, effect. It, it won't really have that huge effect. I think also the Mananchi is coming to, to, to life. Can we say that they are making their own decisions? So he, him moving won't say that he's carried the whole of Ukambani vote to now, I'm looking at what the, the, the deputy president <laughs> said, uh, accusing Jubilee Party. Mm -hmm. If at all you're talking about inconsistency, mm -hmm. he said that he, uh, you know, he, he took issue with Jubilee Party to back Raila Odinga in the coming elections, that, uh, 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 that this it, it is unfair to millions who voted uh, the Jubilee Party into office in the year 2012. No, he can't talk like that because, uh, first of all, he has not been a part of Jubilee Party for the longest time. He publicly, first of all, he, uh, I think the second, um, after the second el elections for presidency, he immediately started campaigning, whereas they had laid very good strategies with the president uh, for the things that were to be done so that they can complete. We know very well, uh, for example, completing all the things they had planned to do wouldn't have happened in the first five years. So it was to be completed in the next five years. But immediately after elections, he started campaigning, mm. right? And even left the party. We've uh, been uh, seeing him championing for another party's agenda, which I think this is something we should look into uh, uh, with the parties, uh, there are regulations, right? The mm. minute you start championing for another or start to behave in a manner to suggest that uh, you belong to a different party, then it is the wise thing for you to leave 
and then go champion for that party so he cannot um say that jubilee has taken up another another candidate because basically he's no longer a member of jubilee party he might not have uh, said it and left but his actions have purported that he's already not a member, a member of the of party. Jubilee party so the, he, it would be very wrong for him to accuse jubilee party of not supporting him whereas he's not a member or but what led to that you know, because he, in, 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 in his view, the deputy president uh, is uh, associating the problems of Jubilee to the, uh, the association between Jubilee and Robert Raila Odinga. And of course, dating back to the uh, handshake. And uh, that's why we are here today. To, to, and uh, we are having this particular conversation where he is now extending, um, for lack of a better term, a handshake <laughs> to the Oka leaders. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> we can say for once, even yeah. his was a handshake. In 2013 mm. and, yes. and the previous year also, it was a handshake also mm. between him and uh, Uhuru. Then why else would he have a problem when the president... I, I have listened to the president talk sometime we were in Sagana. He called us to Sagana. I've also listened to his conversation. Uh, every time what he talks about is unity of purpose. Uh, having he talks about the continuity of a nation. It's mm. not about an individual's personal interest, but Kenya as a nation, it's about the economic continuity. It's about the peace mm. yeah, of a nation. And this is, was the reason why he extended the handshake to Raila. Because we saw after the elections, we saw the way the country was at unrest. Mm. Every, there was uh, this Monday thing. Every Monday, there were demonstrations in town. Businesses were not going on. Tiagas Mondays, eh? Tiang exactly. But immediately, the handshake happened. There was peace. Business happened. Everything continued happening. The Mamamboga, who is purported to be the one eh, of this other <laughs> party we will not mention, was at peace. <laughs> could, could be able to hold their businesses every day and uh, do their things. And yet now, somebody claims to say that handshake was bad. I don't think... I'd, I, I do not see why we would be having a problem <laughs> with a handshake. Uh, your, your voice on that. Okay. You, you remember the, the independent constitution mm -hmm. in, 20, in 2010 when Kenya promulgated the new constitution. This new constitution was supposed to address some key issues. As part of it was the historical injustice, land reforms, br bringing national unity, you know. And, uh, of, of, of which, of which, sorry to cut short, of which the deputy president also mentioned the issue of the failed referendum yes. during his speech yesterday. Yes. Mm. And uh, this issue about national unity, it it is cross cutting, you know, it's cross cutting, bec cross cutting because uh, the issue about handshake, it's, it's it's a matter of national national unity, you know. If the deputy president is not comfortable, uh, Uru, the handshake between Uru Kenyatta and uh, Honorable Raila Odinga. Then I think uh, it is double standard though, for him you know, to extend that, ha that same hand mm. to mm. Oka. Mm. Yeah. The, this is what the deputy president said, and I quote, over 8 million people voted Jubilee into office. And some people have decided to back Raila against the wishes of the voters, and this is very wrong. The, you, you, know, you know, this is very interesting. Because uh, first, you know, if you are the pres president, and I'm your deputy. It is, uh, it is important, according to the Constitution, that uh, you respect the president, you know. You cannot come, for example, it's just the first time in office, then you've started campaigning, you know. Mm. You're derailing the, the, agenda, the, the, the full agenda that uh, President Uru Kenyatta was supposed to implement, you know. Mm. So it, I think it's just uh, the guy is just playing PR stance. And uh, he's, uh, he, the, the fact that even if Uru supports. Uh, Raila, in the long run, I think it just be right because uh, in, this, in the same vein, President, uh, the deputy president has not been loyal to his, uh, to his, to his boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so me, I'm laughing because I'm wondering <laughs> which voters are this. <laughs> Those who voted for, for, for Jubilee. Those who put, in, who, who, who put it in power. Wasn't he a Jubilee member then, and now he isn't. And also, okay, he may not have resigned officially because he keeps saying he's the deputy party, but 
he's <laughs> been he, in, he's exactly uh, would resign but he's already yeah. championing for another course for another party's course and anyway we've seen there eh, mm. over the past few days as uh, baba Raila has been moving around uh, Mount Kenya region, of which has over 8 million voters. And he's been welcomed very well. So I'm wondering which voters are these that it's against their will? Okay. Which one? It is always against the will of the voters. Which one? No, it's not against the will of the voters. Interesting view. Interesting view. I'm looking at the, 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 uh, the, the other side where we are seeing the deputy president now saying that the, the Oka leaders should not be coerced into supporting Raila Odinga. Hmm. You, thought, you thought on that? Is that are you seeing coercion hmm. here? And, uh, and, 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 and should the Oka leaders listen to the voice of the deputy president? I think, uh, I think the Oka team made a statement hmm. and said they are not being coerced. It was sometime last week, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And also, I can say for sure, I have attended a forum where we, as the Mount Kenya people, have sat down and listened to the Oka team also. As mm -hmm. we, I think you heard of the MKF, the Mount Kenya Foundation, yes, sometime. Yes, yes, yes. Sat down and listened to Raila first. And then uh, another opportunity was given to listen to the Oka team. Was, was that happening on... During last week, yeah. uh, was it or was it the other week? The other week. The, the, the other yeah, week. yeah, yeah. I also sat down and listened to the Oka team. Yeah. So no one is coercing the Oka team. Uh, the, everyone has been given an equal opportunity. You know, um, as I've said, the Mount Kenya region has over 8 million votes. And this is why every candidate is focusing towards it because if they are to win, they need at least 10% of these 8 mm -hmm. million votes. So the Mount Kenya right now is a very... What do we say? That bride that everyone wants, huh? That mm. girl everyone <laughs> <laughs> wants for themselves. Uh -huh. So we can't say they've been coerced. I have not seen them publicly come out and say they've been coerced. Mm. Apart from when they have several meetings with um, maybe the president and the others, then people uh, assume. It doesn't come from them, but it, it, it's the people start assuming, oh, they were being coerced to support a certain candidate. But I, I think last week they made a, a, a statement mm -hmm. that claimed they were not being coerced. No, 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 uh -huh. I mm -hmm. think it was the same way they are being uh, extended for the hand, <laughs> the way the, the deputy is extending for them. It's mm -hmm. the same way they are being extended this other side. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why his is an extension, but to the other side is a question. So it's a question. Oh, all right. It is very right. I'm, I, I want us to talk about uh, uh, Jubilee. Okay. And uh, specifically, I'm looking at what Honorable, uh, 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 the Secretary General of uh, Jubilee, Honorable Rafael Tuju, Tuju said, uh, <laughs> this was last week, and he says, our discussions with ODM are ongoing, they are discussions which are being done at the level of the two party leaders. That's what he said. And uh, he said that it is beyond my pay grade to divulge something to you which uh, can come up at the level of the two party leaders. Now, currently as we speak, we, we, there is a, a, a something that is coming up, a meeting that uh, is, is, is coming up, and uh, we believe that this might be uh, a conversation that might change the whole dynamics in Jubilee Party. The National Delegates Convention, the NDC, coming up. Are we seeing, um, and, and this comes to you, uh, Geraldine, are we seeing a change in Jubilee Party and uh, what should, what should, uh, what, is, what is your expectation in regards to this particular meeting? Now, because last week, the, uh, deputy, the Secretary General revealed that the party was planning to hold that particular meeting, and uh, it, is, it has now been called, that is expected to, among others, ratify the coalition agreement between the two outfits. Okay, so, <clears throat> firstly, um, I think it's about time. I think mm -hmm. it's about time. We've been hearing this divorce all the time. Uh, the deputy president is already elsewhere mm -hmm. and all that. I think it's, a, it's also a democratic right for anyone that feels they want to belong to another party mm -hmm. to peacefully do so. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, this is a time for the Jubilee Party to allow those that feel they should be elsewhere to be. Mm -hmm. like them mm -hmm. and to remain those that are loyal to the party mm -hmm. to continue being members 
at peace eh? and to clarify all these things that have been happening uh all those who've been wanting you know some people started uh, behaving in a manner to suggest that they are no longer in jubilee quite a long time ago yeah. so it's about time and it's it's very funny now that uh, they've been told it's okay it's about time for for you to be wherever you want they mm -hmm. start now fighting uh, that they are being chased away and mm -hmm. over the years, over the past uh, few years, we've seen them, uh, even in elections, for example, in Kiamba, where we needed Jubilee, we had a Jubilee candidate. People mm -hmm. who purport to be in Jubilee, to be Jubilee members, are already championing for a candidate of another party. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it should be a problem now that they are being told, okay, then be wherever you want to be. Mm -hmm. So right. I think right. uh, it, it's a good... It's a good uh, time it's about time for the jubilee party to have that ndc mm. and to have its members legitimize its members and show the world it's still there it's the ruling party it has its members and it has delivered Manisha, what do you think about this uh, the, 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 the uh, sg of jubilee said that it is very important to appreciate that this is a political office yes. i would be a very worried person if nobody expresses uh, dissatisfaction with my work I'd be worried if nobody was hitting me every <laughs> other day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, uh, that's uh, the, the, the coming conference for Jubilee. I think it's uh, going to be an interesting one because uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, first of all, uh, you know, <coughs> Rebel Tuju said that he's going to, exp they're going to, as a party, they're going to expel uh, Deep Ruto. Although it has not come out clearly, but uh, if that happens, and I am looking for, I think it may, it may happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it, may, it may not have so much impact on, uh, on uh, Ruto, because uh, that guy, you know, he's, uh, he's, 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 as much as he's playing tactics here and there, he's an astute, polit he's a, he's an astute polit politician, you know. So that's, that conference that is, is, is coming for, for Jubilee, mm -hmm. it, it may also announce an alliance with the ODM. Alliance between um, yeah uh, Jubilee and uh, ODM yeah mm -hmm. a partnership to cover one candidate who will stand for presidency mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um, so I'm at, what are the ramifications that uh, you're seeing as a as an individual in regards to this NPC uh, meeting especially uh, politically moving forward to the presidential bid that is coming up in 2022 I think it will, it it will make clear for example you know when the Jubilee and the uh, ODM partner. Mm. Uh, the Peruto now will get a will get a chance, for example, now to say that you know, you see, this, I came out of Jubilee because of this and this and this. You know, I came and formed UDA because this and this and this. And I also it will have an effect an effect on public attitude. You know, mm -hmm. and the and the vote and, and the votes. Mm -hmm. You know, people will turn out. I I, th I am a person who believe that in 2022, pe most people will turn out for for voting. You know. I, 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 I hope this meeting will be a successful one that uh, will uh, change the whole conversation. Uh, um, definitely, I think it will be. And then I think it's a, it, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I know Jubilee will not repeat the mistake it did when it was TNA, where it mm -hmm. merged and lost the TNA outfit completely. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. now URP it seems like it's <laughs> the one going to do the Uda thing. Well, I I haven't so, been, been, been hearing much about TNA. Exactly, because they merged. They mm -hmm. didn't have a coalition. They uh, had a merger. They had a merger. Where they totally lost TNA. European yeah, became and, and, and that's what I'm wondering. Should we go back? No, no, no. I don't think uh, that's even an option. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be wise to have a merger again with ODM or something. Mm -hmm. I think it would be good to have a coalition. Mm -hmm. mm, Azimi or Laumodra. Say mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. uh, we are like we had the NASA mm -hmm. and had all these other parties uh, such that when they feel uh, it's n they can no longer work together, then mm -hmm. the parties then go back to the original uh, Outfit. outfits. Yeah. yeah? Uh, so I think it will be nice to remain at the Jubilee Party, mm -hmm. not going to Amadra again. Mm -hmm. Just be the Jubilee Party if it's ODM, Oka, whatever, and then maybe we can have a coalition. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's talk about ODM. Now, ODM leader Raila Odinga yesterday uh, continued to keep us guessing 
in Norway, mm. and uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was interesting how uh, you know the, when when he was talking because he has set a stage for his fifth uh, stab at the presidency by launching the countrywide tours under the Azimio la Umoja uh, movement. Now he said this, and I quote: "I have been moving around the country, rallying our people to unite. I am remaining with the uh, uh, Ukambani region, South Rift, and Nairobi. I will announce whether I will be on the ballot on uh, December 9th." In Nairobi, Minishi, the expectation yes, of that. Raila must be on the ballot when <laughs> 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 no, I know Raila cannot support any, any, any person. <laughs> So even if the UDA come to join, they are the ones who, who who will support the deputy president for his seat. Yes. And 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 and, and so but so we expect even Raila, no matter what, he is going to buy us. Yeah, and, okay. and that's the reason why you know the deputy the, the reason why he defected from uh, Jubilee. One of the reasons is because he feared that they may deny him the the, the ticket to vie for the president seat. So he went and formed UDA. So he, just for you know for as a collateral so mm -hmm. that. If they fail maybe to, to declare him or to give him that ticket to vote for, president, for presidency, then he can now use the UDA, you know, as a bargaining chip. Mm, okay, okay. At least he'll have set pace. Set yeah. pace. <laughs> <laughs> now, Raila has to be on the ballot, you know. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's been one of the people that have wanted the very best for this country for the longest time. I think it's time now for him to, to become the pillar of this nation. Mm -hmm. So we've seen him doing the rounds and we've seen uh, previously he'd been told that it would be very hard to climb Mount Kenya. I remember the, was it, uh, this, uh, the, the, during the celebrations we had in uh, Kirinyaga. Mm. In Kirinyaga, he, he he said that he the tractor yeah, Did he? <laughs> <laughs> tractor with Uber, with Uber. yeah I also tractor. had that yesterday Peter yeah. Ken was asking in, in Nairobi yeah. whether to climb the mountain is it easier with a tractor or with a wheelbarrow with, with wheel wheel it was very interesting that was, <laughs> I love how people use imagery I don't, I don't, I don't it was it, it is very interesting now this Azimio La Umoja campaign. Um, uh, uh, how far do you see it going, especially go getting to the uh, grass in regards to the grassroots level? Uh, I think it is a very good, um, it's a very good campaign mm -hmm. because um, it's the unity of purpose. It's the continuity of this nation. It's not about an individual's interest. It is what's best for this nation. Uh, shared purpose as a nation, unity. Yeah. So that we do not see a repeat of the post-election violence. It's the unity, wanting the same thing, not the same things, prosperity, shared prosperity mm -hmm. for the nation. And I think um, having this will be a key, a key thing in the coming government because we will want to see some of the things that, uh, as you're saying, the constitution um, was supposed to to see, for example, I can say in the Mount Kenya region, we have uh, constituencies that have very huge populations. And uh, like uh, in Kiambu, we have one that has over 450,000 uh, mm. people, Riru, mm. whereas uh, when the, an MP is getting the CDF, is given the same amount with someone who has another constituency that has 20,000 people. You see, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. so it would be important to have this as a mere lau moja where mm. It's the unity of purpose. When we are united, what can we do? How can we ensure that uh, resources are equitably distributed? How do we see that uh, gender is considered in the next parliament? How do we see Serikali Avijana? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it will do very, very well on the grassroots level yeah. because it is something the country needs. Mm -hmm. Not just to want or aspire, but it's something that this nation needs for its continuity. Y your thoughts on Azimir La Umoja? You know, in the words of Kofi Annan, he said that uh, nothing can be more dangerous to our efforts to build peace and development than a world divided along religious, ethnic, or cultural lines. In each nation and among all nations, we must, be, we must build a society based on share our shared humanity. And mm -hmm. just as my colleague here has said, 
shared humanity and shared, shared unity, you know. I think uh, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it gives us a, 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 a pace, you know, that uh, we need to work in partnerships. And uh, Kenya being a democracy, in as much as the Freedom House categorized us as a partial democratic state, but at least we have, we have, we have uh, domesticated some ideals of democracy. And that one of them being that we are a multi-party state, you know. Mm -hmm. This multipartism should not be exploited by unscrupulous politicians for their mm. own selfish interest, yeah. but yeah, for the mm -hmm. but it should be for the interest of the common one. Let me quote this: I had promised that I will ensure every poor family gets a stipend of six thousand shillings per month. <laughs> Geraldine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait>. Continue <laughs> finish. <laughs> this is called the Social Protection Fund. It happens in, our, in other countries like the UK, US, mm. and Germany, where poor families who cannot fend for themselves are supported <coughs> by, by government. There are many Kenyans who have come up against this particular statement. Yes, you know, the, what the realize is failing to understand is that we are a developing country. And uh, that thing all, all, mostly, all, invariably usually happens in, developed, in the developed world. You know, I'm not against the 6,000 stipend. Yes, granted, it can have an impact, you know, on the uh, on the police proletariat and the you know mm. the lower class uh, p p p Kenyans. But uh, let us come to think of it: how is that going to be to be achieved? You know, mm. and it brings the question that is very important that we need to ask ourselves: is the question of demagoguery. We are having so many demagogues in in Kenya. Most of these politicians, if you ask me, most of these presidential as aspirants, they are demagogues. They just want to come, for example, if I know that you have a problem with water, I'll come, I'll say, I'll bring you seven tanks of, or I'll drill 1,000 boreholes of water, you know, mm. just to suit your interest. When I come maybe to Kambani, where there's drought, I'll come there and say, I'll, I'll donate. Is, is, is that the case for this, for 6,000? Is that is, so, Yes, so how are you going to achieve that? Yes, we are being overburdened by foreign debts. It is, it's impossible. Geraldine? Well, as an economist, by profession. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you uh, economically analyze uh, this particular uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I understand where he came from. I have seen part of uh, the thing, the things he would want to do for this nation. Mm -hmm. And one of them is his... Uh, I have seen uh, the... What do you call it? Um, in his manifesto mm -hmm. for... I remember we, we sat him down not a long time ago as the youth of Mount Kenya here at UON mm. and we listened to him and he listened to us and the things we had asked for and one of the things that I saw and listened was that it's stability one of the things is looking at is stability and, and a conducive environment to thrive and carry out businesses so mm -hmm. as a social uh, safety net this would be if well implemented it's doable how this it's is doable, because uh, I, I sat down with some people who are thinking through it, is that um, you see how you form chamas and circles in mm. things like that, where you have psychosocial support groups. Eh? Well, you, you They're called village, together exactly, like there's table banking, there's a village savings and mm. loanings. Yeah? Yeah. So with this then, you can be able to help everyone with that 6,000 shillings, if they form the social, those psychosocial support groups, yeah? Mm. So like the Boda Boda people form one, uh, the graduates who are out there doing their one, two, three, form something uh, in groups, then it is possible. You see all these uh, funds that we have had previously misappropriated, then it's doable. So for example, the youth fund, the women fund, in organized groups, it is possible to do that 6,000 shillings. And another thing I've seen very him championing, and con he told us during that day, he will continue as President Uhuru has been doing, is fighting corruption. Because this is one of the places that funds in Kenya get lost. But then how do you still enable uh, uh, um, ensure that this is successful? Distributing the 6,000 yeah. equally among all Kenyans, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, uh, the issue of, of course, money being siphoned I know, I know. and corruption. Yeah. How it, successful is or what is the success, success rate so, of this particular okay. project? If you, if you look at uh, one of the things he has also said he will do in the things his manifesto is doing around, he's saying that um, 
he will ensure he keeps a database. He maintains mm. a data bank for the skilled and unskilled and all that labor group here. Yeah? So that then he has organized labor. You can know who is where. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know with data, classified data and a data bank, you'll be able to know these are the people that require these 6,000 shillings. Yeah. And this way you're able to do also the monitoring and evaluation. And I have seen this happen. Is, okay. is it workable? I think I have, I'm of, a, of the contrary opinion, because uh, Kenya is a, is a closed political system. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we are a closed political system, there are no checks and balances. Look at the executive, the judiciary, the parliament, even the, the independence of the judiciary, Article 159 of the Kenyan Constitution. It is, is, it is not even uh, something that, you know, it has not even, it has not been effective. And uh, this issue about 6,000 uh, monthly stipend by Raila, it's a question of distribution of wealth. Yes, we, you know, there's a saying that, uh, not, not even a saying, there's a scholar who say that Africa is a rich continent, but paradoxically, Africa is also the poorest continent. Mm. Why? Because we have the rich resources, but we cannot utilize this resource. Even if we utilize it, it is for the oligarchs, you know, for the wealthy. Mm. So the question is about distribution, and uh, that explains how our public administration is very compromised. You know, our public, even if Raila maybe implement it, he, he he signs that, that thing into a, into into effect, you know, mm -hmm. into a law. Uh, the fact is, uh, how, how how are we going to to distribute? You know, okay. that's six thousand. Yeah, because. You, you cannot work alone. That's the reality. And, uh, now, now, he said this, uh, uh, and, and, and still on you, Gerald. Uh, he said, we do not want to see our people going without food. This is why I have said that every family that has no source of income will get 6000 I have served as a prime minister. I understand the economy, and I know where the money is. I know all the loopholes where the public funds are siphoned. I will seal all of them and make money available for people. Well, when he was the prime minister, I guess he could have done what he has said. That six, that six, he could have implemented that thing. But, you know. The 6,000. Yeah. I, I think, okay, Raila is not a bad leader, by the way. He's an astute polit politician. But uh, that, the only place where I disagree with him is the issue about that 6,000 monthly, you know. All right. Because uh, we don't have the mechanism to implement that kind of. So are you saying if the me mechanisms are put in place, it's doable? Yeah, if the mechanism are put in place and uh, the distribution of resources is, is, uh, is equal, I think it, it, it can work. Kenya has yeah. a lot of money, by the way. And so the 6,000 so can work? Yeah. It can work if we are accountable for, for every shilling. Okay, okay. Yeah. The problem is the mechanisms. Yeah. The mechanisms. All right. the right Let, mechanisms are put in place. Let me talk about one mechanism then. Hmm. The carry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> he said, or Novorello Dega said, that the Kenya Revenue Authority should not harass small and medium sized businesses or traders, but should instead create a conducive environment of doing business. And uh, he said that he will also, interestingly, um, ensure that he works with the president as, uh, as of now to, to consider extending the Kazim Tani program until August next year. Is that one mechanism that can? How do you see it taking us to the next level? Uh, actually, that has already started working. Last week, I was in a place in Gidurai. I was mm. listening to the young people yeah. talk. And they were saying it has already taken place, the Kazim Tani. So that's one mechanism. Uh, the, where families, young families, you know, most of the time we forget that the youth also have families. They yeah. are families that are headed by youth and they're struggling. And uh, we... The Cousin Tani has been a project that has really helped the young people be able to, to do the next thing, uh, to earn something in their pockets. Mm. And uh, so that's one mechanism for sure. And also that one, uh, the KRA, not harassing the small businesses. I think these are some of the things that, you know, BBI was not that bad at all. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it was offering solutions and the implementation process of how they should be done to achieve them. Yeah, and this was one of the things. You're For example, the box. tax. <laughs> the, I think these are some of the things also we would want him yeah. to find a way to okay. have them implemented or whoever the next gov uh, president is going to be. We need, for example, that tax holiday for the young people. That's a conducive environment. As much as you're being promised, uh, let me now say maybe that 6,000 or that 3,000, mm. wheelbarrow 
your children. Mm. You need a conducive working environment because if the taxes remain the same, if being harassed for licenses and all these things still remain the same and the inflation rates are still that Cheap. high, Cheap. that yeah. 6,000, that 3,000 at the end of the day will not create stability and empowerment. At the end of the day, you will. Uh, even when you get that capital to run your business as a young person, with the inflation, with the taxes, you end up uh, not having a break-even point. So at the end of the day, you go back to square one, where you have no capital, you have no business. Right, if the right. environment is not stable and it's not conducive for your, for your business. Uh -huh. your, yeah. your, your voice? Yes. Just to add on what she said, mm. uh, you know too much government intervention in the economy is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I think right now we are having too much government intervention. And what we need to is it, is, yeah, Hold on. <laughs> Even government is supposed to handle the issue of economy. <laughs> but <laughs> if too much, you know, too much government intervention. You know, Kenya is... So it's like saying, um, if you keep on doing your role, it is dangerous. No. Kenya is a democratic state. And you remem remember, Kenya is part of the... Af Af is binded by the African Union Charter. Uh -huh. And uh, if it's binded by the African Union Charter, we have also ratified the, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement which highlights, that, highlights the issue about re removal of trade barriers, you know, allowing market forces you mm -hmm. know, okay. to yes. be area. Yes, and yes. Uh, if we are binded by that charter, then I think we must re respect the Pacta Savant of that charter. This mm. means that uh, we, we must not have too much government intervention in the, in the sense that we must deploy a strategy. Uh, the best strategy, and in my opinion, is the market-friendly approach, okay. where yes. we have uh, the principle of the golden mean that that brings the an excess between the two. Okay. The issue of the KRA, your voice on that, H KRA and the Kazim Tani. Yeah, the issue of the KRA, I think also, as you have said earlier, is not about KRA tax, you know, this uh, these high taxes that KRA is implementing, especially on the small trade business, mm. they need to reduce the taxes, but also now we need to look at uh, the government needs to to intervene the way it has intervened the issue about cancer, you know. I, I believe that in KRA there there, there are some very we need officials. we need KDF in <laughs> even if it means KDF KRA. as long as yeah as long as our taxes are, are accountable you know by the way you are saying we need KDF in KRA that's what you say but it's working then will it it's work, work. It's work. <laughs> we we are tired of corruption <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I want us to bring this conversation to a close i want to give each one of you final uh, time to have a final word in regards to this conversation of course uh, to j just make a general uh, a general comment as you speak to kenyans um let me start with uh, you munishi still uh have a final word as we bring this conversation to a close um maybe you can talk to kenyans that is your camera there Okay, Kenyans, as we look at, uh, we are nearing an uh, election period, it is important that we put, we be careful how politicians use us. We should not allow the politicians to take advantage, advantage of us. You know, it's very sad that in Kenya, age and not civic education is the main determinant of voting. And we need to move away from that narrative where Kenya will implement or rather to institutionalize democracy and the democratic process so that we can have a we can have a society where i'm not trying to demonize i'm not trying to demonize the illiterate or to demonize politicians but kenyans must elect leaders who they know will cater for their interest and not to elect demagogues who will in the long run bring this this economy to back or rather to retrogress us back all right yeah thank you so much uh -huh. geraldine mm -hmm. uh speak have a final word within a short time and that is your camera there okay uh mm -hmm. where i want to say what this country needs is unity what this country needs is prosperity and what this country needs is continuity and for that to be achieved we have to vote the right leaders in place and our time is now we don't have to wait for another five years to complain of the leaders we put in place and not voting is voting for the wrong candidate so it's time to take our and the only way we can make that difference is if we 
took our voters cards we went and registered as voters and made sure that our voice counted on that ballot so i'd request that uh especially the young people who make over 70 percent of this nation to make sure you have your sila hayako ikweni that uh your vote so and uh, as we listen let us make the correct decisions and also uh, one thing before i forget we are also going to have the national youth council elections yes yes so yes, i would yes. urge the young people to make sure they come out in large numbers mm -hmm. and register as uh, voters for the national youth council also and make sure they vie for those positions because then that is where they will start championing mm -hmm. For the youth agenda. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you a member of? Yes, uh, yes, I'm a member of the National Youth Council mm -hmm. for sure, mm -hmm. and I'll be there to ensure that uh, the youth are educated on the importance of having a youth council because you know we wanted to have that commission for the youth in the yeah. BBI, yeah. that's not possible. <laughs> but now there's this route. Eh? There's this route uh, where through the National Youth Council, we the youth can be heard. So right. it will be a good thing for them okay. to come out. It will also set the pace for them in the elections. They can vie for positions also to continue pushing for the youth agenda. All right. Thank you so much. That is Geraldine uh, Moiduri. And uh, to my extreme right, Gerald Minishi. Uh, the GMs. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Much more good heaven. That's why 254. By the way, uh, I saw a comment online yeah. on social media where some Kenyans are saying we need uh, the, the KDF to, to take over the Kenya power. Yes, it should. It is. <laughs> you know, the ESCC, the ESCC, you know, it has failed us terribly. It Ken, should, by the way. Uh, Kenya power. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, as long as this about losing the BDI because I feel like uh, for elections we will not be having uh, leaders. You know, ESCC has failed us. Yeah, yeah it true. gives us candidates who have a track record that should not be vying. You know, okay. if we had KDF take that also, it would be very good. <laughs> <laughs> Keep engaging with us. The is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel is where you can be able to find us. Keep talking to us. Let us know where you're watching us from as we continue with today's morning conversation. But for now, we've come to the end of uh, uh, youth and politics, but we still have a lot in store for you coming up in a bit. A big thank you to uh, General Dean and Gerald Miruri Minishi. Certainly <laughs> <laughs> so much. Well, <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank Keep you. it locked right here. This is why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. Stay tuned for this and much more.